We're glad to be joined now by Dr. Robert Chaponis. He is the Head of Medical Affairs, Americas Region for GlaxoSmithKline Consumer Healthcare. Thanks for being here. Oh, my pleasure, glad to be here. Can you tell us how interprofessional oral health collaboration is so important for people as they age? Well, first and foremost, oral health is an, an essential part of aging. Uh, it's so important because as people age, we see that dental problems accumulate, periodontal disease worsens, and it's so important for healthcare professionals to have an understanding of the important link between oral health and overall systemic health. For example, research has demonstrated that it's important to maintain good oral health, especially for folks who may have chronic diseases such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So with, with that, it is important to expand education of oral health into the curriculum of all of the healthcare professionals, not just dentistry, but pharmacy, nursing, uh, primary care physicians as well. Because as uh, issues occur with the mouth, uh, that may affect self-image. It may affect the ability to interact socially, uh, as well as uh, physical and, and mental deficits. So it's important to establish that link between oral health and systemic health uh, from an educational standpoint. And you know, there have been many advances made. Uh, a lot of great work being done with nurse practitioners, uh, physician assistants, um, and even the pharmacist. I'm a pharmacist myself, and there are opportunities for the pharmacist to improve oral health. Even simple questions at the pharmacy counter. When was the last time you've seen a dentist? Um, are you having pain in the mouth, uh, bleeding gums, for example? So the pharmacist is also uh, accessible and can also help uh, pinpoint where there may be issues affecting oral health. So the point is all of us uh, in the healthcare professionals have the capacity to be an oral health champion. Needing to work together, I can see the importance there. Share your perspective now on how, how your partnership with GSA has impacted the need for better education of healthcare professionals. Yeah, the partnership with GSA has been exceptional. Uh, when we developed the partnership about three years ago, first and foremost was creating a working group. It's led by Dr. Stephen Schumann, a GSA fellow, I might add. And the initial remit was to develop this roadmap to improve oral health. We convened a oral health forum in 2017. Uh, through GSA and the working group, which brought together an interdisciplinary group of stakeholders, all with a focus on improving oral health. From that meeting, six strategic imperatives emerged, and one of them is uh, increasing the oral education of healthcare professionals. Uh, I may also add some of the other important elements of that uh, uh, workforce as well was the interprofessional relationships, setting up practice uh, opportunities for all the professions, creating oral health champions. But with respect to uh, the education, uh, that has uh, been a very positive outcome of this relationship. GSA, along with the working group, has collaborated with many societies, including the uh, American Society of Aging, the American Dental Education Association, uh, the National Association of Chronic Disease Directors, and certainly the American Dental Association, all forging relationships to improve uh, the education of, of our healthcare professionals. And you said that partnership started in 2017? 2016, actually, 16, we okay. kicked it off. 2017 was the uh, Oral Health Forum, which really set the roadmap in terms of developing that interdisciplinary roadmap to improving oral health. So what do you hope to accomplish next year in 2020? Well, work still remains uh, to address the strategic imperatives. And you know, one of the advantages of the GSA is its ability to recruit such a wide spectrum of stakeholders, healthcare professionals, you know, from policy, research, practice, advocacy, and the GSA does a wonderful job educating its own membership. For example, at this conference, there's the interest group on oral health, which convenes on Thursday, look in the program. Uh, and there's also educational sessions focused around this topic, as well as many, many poster uh, presentations as well. So by empowering its own membership and getting people excited and uh, in, in empowering to, to go out and really spread the word on the, on the impact that they can have, an essential element of uh, oral health is also nutrition. So the team will be looking at the important link between 
nutrition as well as oral health uh, for the 2020 season. I understand the uh, new Surgeon General report on oral health is also coming out next year. What do you hope that report will address? Yes, it's a call to action. It's a very important call to action. The last time the Surgeon General oral health report came out was in 2000. So what I would hope to see is certainly a review of you know the vision, the issues, the challenges, but also we have the science now, the inextricable link between oral health and systemic health. And if that compelling science message is contained within that report, I feel that's going to move the needle forward. For example, 70% of individuals over 65 have periodontal disease. You look at Medicare recipients, two thirds of them do not have dental health insurance. It's a medical issue, but it's also a political issue, and we really need to pay attention to that. I'm hoping the report uh, will really make the case to Congress, to healthcare practitioners, um, and to the American people who also have a vested interest. Also, I hope the report addresses communities in need, especially rural communities. Uh, because you know a lot of focus on the urban areas, but we need to think about the rural communities and the impact that uh, that, that that program can have to really improve oral health uh, across the uh, the entire U.S. Dr. Robert Robert Chaponis, thank you so much for all of this great information. Oh, my pleasure.